Good morning. It is Tuesday morning, March 31st, and once again I'd like to come to you today and exhort you and encourage you to study the Word of God. One of the lessons uh, this week was out of the Masterworks uh, quarterly, and it had to do with owing debts. You know, I can remember when I got my first credit card and I was so excited until the debt began to pile up, pile up and I had to try to figure out how to pay back what I owed. It can take years, it can take a lifetime if we let it get out of control. And debt is a, a process of a lot of times, most of the time, of being out of control in our lives. In Matthew 6, verse 19, Jesus says, Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through to steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust nor doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through to steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye is evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We can't do the will of God in the will of the world. We can't do the will of God and do our will at the same time. Sometimes we are in debt. Most of the time, I would say, we are in debt for four reasons. The first reason is we have out-of-control wants. We just want things, and we don't control ourselves. You can call it binge shopping. You can call it hoarding. You can call it whatever you want to. But in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Lust just means something that's uncontrolled. You know, the gift of the Holy Spirit, I mean the fruit of the Holy Spirit, one of them is being in self-control, being under control of the Holy Spirit. And if we are participating in things that cause us to uh, give in to the lust of eyes, then we are out of control of the Holy Spirit. But our eyes see things and we want it. We see commercials on TV. We see other people having it. We want a boat because we'd like to go up and down the river and a John boat isn't good enough. We need a cruiser to go up and down the river on. But we are out of control and we just keep buying and spending and buying and spending and buying and spending. Another reason that we are in debt is we have out of control needs. You see, it's not just our wants that get us in trouble, but our needs get us in trouble. For in that same verse, it says there's the lust of the flesh. We have need to eat, and we can binge eat and be out of control with our eating habits. We can eat just because we enjoy food. We eat because it comforts us and makes us feel good and secure. But we'll, for whatever the reason, it can be out of control. We can, we can go out to eat and spend money all the time and be in debt just because we want to eat, and that's a need. Clothes. You can have so many clothes that you can't wear them all. Yes, we need clothing, but it can be out of control. Another one seen in this same verse, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, it's inward expectations, the pride of life. You know, sometimes uh, I want or need something and I just want it because I want it. I want to be able to say, hey, I have this. Hey, I've got a new car. Hey, I've got a new phone. Hey, my phone will do this. Will your phone do this? And we get locked into that. Our society can put us into that. But sometimes it's just pure tea pride in our own selves, wanting to lift ourselves up by the things we own. It's not what we own that defines us. It's who we are and what we do. The other thing 
uh, that can cause us to be in debt is outside expectations, not just the pride within us, but the, the pressure, the peer pressure of society. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, it says, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? And the next statement out of Jesus' mouth says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. This is the way the world looks at it. This is the way the world says we're supposed to do it. This is the way society functions. And to be a member of society, we have to do and have these things. So that can be out of control too is the expectations of our surroundings and our society that is placed upon us can cause us to be in debt. Uh, he finishes that statement says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Our, if we're believers in Jesus Christ and our heavenly Father knows what we need every day and he says his grace is sufficient for us, and he says that if we'll seek him and his kingdom and his righteousness, he'll, he'll provide all our needs. That's what we need, God's expectation. When it comes to our finances, when it comes to our life. Because Micah 6, verse 7 says, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The man is saying, what does God want from me? And in verse 8, the answer comes, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what the, doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Whether it's how we live, or where we go, or what we do for life, whether it's our finances, our spiritual life, our social life, whatever we do, especially our finances, needs to reflect God, needs to be done justly and rightly, needs to be done in mercy. Does God and what he expects control your pocketbook, your checkbook, your life? That's the question we end up with. And I hope that as you take the Bible and take this lesson and think about these verses and think about your relationship with God, are you a Christian, are you a believer in Jesus Christ, to think about your fellowship with God. If you say, yes, I'm a believer, are you living unto him? Is it his expectations that you're following? Seek to know these things as you study his word and be blessed today.